Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. We are live in Studio B. We've moved over to the Cougar Council Room. Alongside Is that Jeremy a nickname Jordan. or an official title? <laughs> we'll we have to figure that out. <laughs> it's a nickname for now, right? Until they tell me otherwise. Until we write it down somewhere. Joining us now is the winningest coach in NCAA tennis history. He is Dave Porter, longtime connections to BYU. Dave, welcome to the show. Okay. Thank you. Congratulations on an unbelievable career, Amazing. By the way. Well, appreciate it. What are your thoughts as you look back on a career that, as we were just discussing over the break, extended to the early 80s and, and when it, you initially started to coach tennis, primarily at BYU-Hawaii? Well, the, the, um, I guess the emphasis was always, for me, who impacted my life the most. And, uh, and coaches had a huge impact in my life. And as you know, even though you're working with NFL and NBA and MLB players, most of our student athletes are going to go on and be exceptional in other areas. So my goal was always to see what I could do to help them achieve those goals and have a great athletic experience at the same time. So you're from Provo. Did you go to Provo High? I went to BY High School, which the university owned oh. and operated. They closed it down at the end of my junior year, and I graduated from Provo High School. What, so where was that in Provo? That's where the academy is. I guess there's the a library, library down there now? Okay, it was there yeah. until, until what year? 1968. Until 1968. Okay, I didn't realize that. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I love the history of BYU. That's great. So then you, uh, you end up going on to Mission England. You go to BYU, and you're on the basketball team? I started playing basketball. Yeah, well, that, Coach Pierce asked me to come and play tennis, but... Nobody watched tennis matches. Everybody <laughs> watched basketball games. So I, I started as a freshman when Kreshmer Chosich yeah. was a freshman. Yeah. And um, so that was, and then I left on a mission and came back, and they just had better players than I was. So they had some great guards, and I, yeah. you know, got in the game at the for warm ups, and it was a slaughter. And other than that, it was, it was. Uh, decided to go back and play tennis too. So were you there for the unveiling of the Marriott Center? No, I was on my mission. Okay, mm. so you're on your mission. I was on my but it was mission. Being so built my and... freshman year, we played in the field, Smith Field House. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. What, uh, okay, tell us everything about Chris Mucosich, because we're obsessed. He is one of the most amazing people I've ever met. And uh, he, not only exceptional talent, but very, very bright and, um, and compassionate. He had some challenges when he got to BYU based on his lifestyle. But once he found the gospel and accepted it, he was all in, beyond, beyond all in. I mean, I think he was the first person that I know of who was authorized by the First Presidency to baptize, confirm, and give the priesthood without any other priesthood assistance. Mm. Wow. Because he was the only person in his country when he went back. That's wild. He eventually translates the Book of Mormon into his native tongue. Yep. He's the uh, ambassador uh, for, to the United States, um, yeah, he's he's the one player in the Basketball Hall of Fame. Like, he's he's special, man. I didn't realize yeah. you played with him. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool, Dave. Yeah. Okay, well, so tip, then clearly you were juggling some things between basketball and tennis. When when did the focus shift from okay, I think I'm done playing basketball and I'm going to focus on tennis? When was that moment? I think it was when I was in Hawaii and I realized. Why be in Hawaii is spend every day indoors, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, you know, made the switch back and went back to school, finished my doctorate, which I'd started here. Um, so when I first graduated, I was hired to run the fitness program at the Missionary Training Center and wrote the exercise program that everybody in the world used for a number of years. And then when I went over to Hawaii, it was... Uh, I decided to keep the academic portion going as well. And you coached there uh, for 33 years and then a few years right after, um, you know, they cut athletics, unfortunately. But uh, what, what was that like to be there that long and build that program? And obviously it was disappointing to have the program cut, but that legacy of athletic excellence at BYU-Hawaii. Well, it, it was an area of excellence, not just the, the tennis portion, but we had a very good women's volleyball program. We had a good men's basketball program. Um, but we, it was small, and, and it, was, it was always there about the, the kids, about the athletes and what they were becoming and what we were trying to make of them. And so, you know, I have had, I've got former players who are from China that are MDs at the UCLA Medical Center. One of, maybe the best player I ever had, a fellow from Czech Republic, is the mayor of Prague. 
<laughs> I mean, so the, 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 these kids are really talented, good people, and, uh, and that's really the goal. It's what they do f from the time they finish. BYU Hawaii, even more international than Provo. Well, because you have a lot by of percentage, yeah. Yes, you have a lot of influence, uh, obviously in Asia and whatnot. But yeah, all over yeah. the place. And and we saw that you coached the Chinese national women's double team that won gold in 04 Olympics, 06 Wimbledon doubles championship. That's it, two different teams. So yeah, I had, two yeah. different I had, teams. Yeah, I had I had yeah. four 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 or five girls that I worked closely with, and two of them won the won the gold medal in in uh, in Athens. That was a side gig to the BYU Hawaii stuff. Yeah, that was. I mean, I'd go over every year. One of my first really talented players was on the Davis Cup team for China and his mother was Deng Xiaoping's private physician. So he had a connection and got me in to work with the coaches and, uh, and Li Ting and Sun Tian Tian were the girls that won the gold medal and then there were two younger girls they wanted me to start working with and those two, uh, Zheng Jia and Yenza, those two one Wimbledon in the Australian Open. It's incredible. Amazing. Incredible. Dave Porter is with us on BYU Sports Nation. We're touching on a few of the accolades, which include 11 championships, 1,438 total victories. And those 11 championships came in Division II or the NIAIA, uh, NAIA level. As you look back on everything that you have accomplished and now go into retirement, it's like, what, what's next for you? I mean, you've accomplished so much, so what's next? Well, like I said, it's not about accomplishing things. It's seeing how you can affect lives. And, uh, and these kids still communicate with me closely. And, and that's what really brings the satisfaction, not just, you know, the wins on, a, on the court. But those are always nice. <laughs> Do you have a favorite tennis player, out of curiosity? I'd say Roger Federer has for a long time been my favorite player, um, just in terms of technique and, and attitude and personality yeah yeah fantastic personality Dave congratulations we could have spent an hour with yes. you I'm sorry we have to go <laughs> I have so many other questions I'll have to connect with you later yes yeah. we appreciate the time thanks, thanks for coming so much. Dave. congrats on a great career